Welcome to our food tour of Vienna. I am Turtle and we have been on the plane for like 20 hours so you'll have to forgive my disheveled look. But either way, we're gonna go get dessert for breakfast. The place behind me has been here since 1913 and I hear they've got really good pastries and some really good coffee. So let's go check it out. Well, we're finally here in Vienna, and after flying 20 hours, why not have some cake and some coffee for breakfast so I can wake up a little bit? And we're gonna start with the Sacre Torte, and then we're also getting an apple strudel and the traditional coffee beverages and Einspanner, which is probably the most traditional when you go to a coffee shop is to get an Einspanner. And it's like two or three shots of espresso and then the rest of it's filled up with whipped cream. And they make some really awesome whipped cream. So I'm very excited to try this. strong espresso um, but uh, there's just a little bit of sweetness with the cream so it blends pretty well together and it's not hot I thought it would be hot it's uh, pretty room temperature we all definitely needed some espresso and that cream was so good and so thick so it took like a couple of minutes to stir it all the way up and as a good rule if you are in Vienna and you're having dessert always get the meat stock This is the Sacre Torte. I'm probably butchering that. Essentially, it's this really dense chocolate cake, and I got it Nietzschlag with cream, which is the traditional way. And uh, this is actually what our waitress recommended, so pretty excited to try it. It's like a really good slice of chocolate cake, but the icing is so thick on the top that it adds an extra layer of sweetness and texture. So, pretty happy with it. Oh yeah. It's really tart. You can really taste the apricot jam, I believe, that they put in this traditionally. And, uh, it's a nice surprise because it just looks like a chocolate cake. And most countries in the Alps have their own apple strudel. And one of the strongest cases for being the place where it originated is Vienna, and uh, I tend to subscribe to that, so let's see, this is one of the highest rated places to get it. Mmm. It's really good. The whipped cream is really simple. But the star is really these apples in here. And there's a nice cinnamon flavor. Maybe a little bit of nutmeg too. That's delicious and it's excellent. One of my very favorite things at home is a meatloaf sandwich and they have really famous meatloaf sandwiches here. And Lieberkass is what they're called and Lieberkass Pepe is the highest rated place to get this in the whole city and it's only like two doors down from our pastry shop so we're doing it in a little, little bit of reverse order but uh, let's go in here and check this out here. So this is the classic. It's uh, pork and beef on a nice little Kaiser roll. Ooh. 
It's very salty and good. Don't I would say it. it tastes more like a ham than it does meatloaf. So it's getting towards dinner time and it is time to have some really traditional food at a highly rated restaurant. So we're gonna head in here. This is a old Benedictine monk monastery and it is called Melker Stiftskeller, I guess. But uh, it's supposed to have the best pork knuckle in town and I like a good pork knuckle. So we apparently should have gotten reservations at the other place. Um, that just gave us enough time to walk down and uh, find a Verstelstan, which is a sausage stand. Sausages in Vienna. Hopefully they're not Vienna sausages. This is the curry verst, and it's a sausage with some brown curry and then some yellow powdered curry. And this is one of the classics, so pretty excited. Mm. It's very good. The brown curry is kind of sweet and sour, which is not what you would expect. But that with the regular curry and the savory sausage, it's a really great combination. And I'm pretty sure this is going to be my favorite, but I'm going to try the classic bratwurst as well. <laughs> Add a little bit of that mustard on there. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's a good bratwurst. It just explodes in your mouth. It's so juicy and flavorful. And then you get a little bit of the spice from the mustard. It was very good. I still think I like the curry one better. Just a good simple bratwurst with a nice mustard and we've got a nice Vienna beer. This little sausage place is a nice start to the night. Prost! And prost to you. And while that definitely wasn't the first curry that I've ever had, uh, I was really looking forward to that next meal and it did not disappoint. No, and it's in this really cool location, like down below the street. We're here down in this old cellar, and this restaurant is actually called Melker Skiffskeller, which means the Abbey of Melker's Cellar, essentially. It's a pretty appropriate name. Um, and we got the Sison beer, which is the seasonal beer, and then Alan got the Steigel. Steigel Lager, and Victoria's got the house wine, and Skoll. And Prost. Prost, Skull, cheers. We're gonna enjoy the hell out of this. So the size and beer is kind of like a West Coast IPA, which isn't really my favorite. It does have a little bit of a citrus type of hop to it, which makes it drinkable. And it's really, really cold. And uh, that's nice, because it's kind of warm down here, which is surprising. And we got quite a smorgasbord of local delicacies, but the star was definitely the pork knuckle. This is a deep fried pork knuckle, and it is supposed to be magnificent pretty much everywhere. You can get this. This is one of the things that we will be, have an opportunity to eat at Oktoberfest. It's essentially a giant piece of pork, and you just kind of pull a piece off, give it to your friend. <laughs> Once you have the bone out, you essentially just have this deep fried, slow cooked for 10 hours it said, pork. And I'm most excited about this like, it's kind of like you get some cracklings with it. And it's 
everything I was waiting for. Absolutely delicious. We have enough for all four of us. We're gonna go family style on everything tonight, and we are going to really, really enjoy everything about this. Prost, pork prost. There's a lot of good things you can get. Obviously, we got some mustard, and we'll get a little bit of that. Gonna get a little bit of this sauce, which seems kind of like a French onion base. Oh my god. And then this is like pure horseradish. So we only want a little bit of that. The skin is very strong. Very good. Okay. The pork, because it's slow cooked for so long, is so tender. But then you get the crunch of the like chicharrones, the pork rinds, and it's really good. And then you add a little bit of the mustard, which adds a sweet, spicy tone to it. And then the uh, onion soup is very savory. It goes together very well. And this plate is finished off with like a potato dumpling. Kind of has like a chewy texture. It's really good. Um, feels kind of like a mofongo almost made out of potatoes. And there's a little bit of slaw there. Which isn't quite as uh, slawy as I thought, so it's kind of good. We've got the little peppers, and this is something that you definitely have to try when you're in Austria or the Alps, because it's going to be ubiquitous everywhere that we're going. I'm glad that we're doing it here like 30 feet under Vienna, because the atmosphere is just so conducive to enjoying this. And this is... Zwiebel Rostbraten. I probably butchered that. It's uh, seared beef. I think the butcher probably butchered that. Oh, brother! If you look, it just looks kind of like a roast beef. It's got a nice seared edge around it. And it comes with this sauce that looks very similar to the sauce that we have with the pork knuckle. And then we got these little crispy fried onions. And of course it comes with potatoes as well. Very hearty. Mm. It definitely tastes like it's cooked in some sort of red red wine base. It's very good. It's very hearty. It reminds me of something that you'd have in Italy. You cannot come to Vienna without having a Wiener Schnitzel. This is a veal Wiener Schnitzel, which is the traditional way to do it. And we're in a traditional restaurant. I don't always love veal, probably just because I'm all Twitter pitted my baby cows or whatever. But it is usually delicious. Mm. The breading is just about perfect. It also comes with like a little cranberry, so I feel like I ate it the wrong way the first time. But it's the right balance of creaminess, and they beat the veal so thinly, and they take a feed on it, and it tenderizes it. Everything we've had at this place is top-notch. It's wonderful, and you should definitely go out of your way to find it when you're here in Vienna. Alan, what is your favorite part of the meal? Hands down, pork knuckle. 
What do you like about it? Uh, probably the knuckliness of it. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> I really yeah. enjoyed the I, I gotta say, that's, that's where it got me. Right, it's not arthritic at all. <laughs> <laughs> and how about you, babe? I don't really do favorites because, like Brendan, I like to eat and I like a lot of different things, but I thought the pork knuckle was really kind of unique even though we've had a lot of different forms of fried pork, like a chicharron. This had a bunch of really great things to it and then of course the wiener schnitzel. That's like so yummy. Before I had the wiener schnitzel, I would have said that the seared beef was my favorite because I just thought it was really nice and hearty and I love the red wine base. Uh, but the wiener schnitzel is very nice. The veal is very tender. And then you add the cranberry sauce to it. It just adds a little extra. And uh, I really like it a lot. And for me, it's the squeeze of lemon. No, it isn't. Uh, it's definitely the pork knuckle. The pork knuckle was a rock star. I probably will have four more of these by the time we're done. I love chicharron. I love pork. And it was just so good. It's so worth stopping here. We usually have bean bees in this time of year, but because they didn't book it far enough in advance, another Wiesen took over and it's more of like a music slash beer festival. And so we just decided we're gonna go around and hop around some breweries and get some street food. This one's called Schnauzer and Beagle and it's just a small little nano brewery. It's apparently Australian style beer, so we came to Austria to have Australian beer. Good eye. We figured we'd try three of their beers. So we got their normal lager, which is called Fleabag. And then we got their blonde ale, which is called Gentlemen Prefer. And then to finish it off, we got an oak-aged IPA, which is called Blackbeard. And we're related to Blackbeard, so figured we might as well try it. I'm gonna go from light to dark. So I will start the water. It's boring. You can drink it though. Um, it's smooth. There's just not much to talk about it. And the blonde ale, I usually like blondes. It smells a little better. definitely higher IBUs than I'm used to for a blonde ale. It's almost like an IPA and a blonde ale had a baby. I don't hate it, but I don't love it either. So Blackbeard. It doesn't smell very piratey because I'd expect that a piratey probably stinks and this is really floral. It's definitely an IPA. It's a little bit sourer than most IPAs. The IBUs are only probably 20 to 25. It's drinkable. I got the lemon ginger beer. It's called the Ginger Heist, which is a cute name. It had a nice little hand-drawn drawing. And the bartender recommended to have it as a spritzer. So, it smells very gingery. It's pretty gingery, but it's really lemony. You don't smell as much of the lemon, but it really comes through in the flavor. It's really nice and refreshing. So apparently it's Austrian beer day, and the local beer place that we went to had like games and stuff, essentially for the day. And one of them was to paint their mascot, which happens to be a beagle, this is Schnauzer and Beagle, and uh, he's actually sitting over here, his name's Nutmeg. You have to paint him into a famous movie scene. So Dad did his own rendition, and I'm doing mine, and uh, we'll see who wins.
And so we really took our time with that and tried to make it really nice. We don't really have a lot of artistic talent in this family, no. except for Victoria. And so I did Risky Business. You can see it up on the top with uh, Tom Cruise barking his way out there, barking out something in his underwear, and then uh, Brendan. And uh, I did Back to the Future Part 2, specifically the scene where he's gliding across the water in front of the bank. So I want you guys to be the judge. Look at the paintings. You guys saw a video of the dog. You tell us who you think did better. Now, I'm really excited about this one, not just because the can art is spot on. Really cool. They did a much better job with their art than either Brendan or I did. But this is called the Rescue Me Porter, and I love porters. The nose is so molasses -y. I found that a lot of beers here, when they decide to go sweet, they go over the top sweet. This is a very, very good beer. We may not have liked the light, lighter beers, but this dark porter is excellent, and the molasses really comes out. Super malty and good and a little bit higher ABV. I love this, I can sip on this for a minute. One of the games was a beer quiz and we tied for first with like four other people. But uh, we won a shot of schnapps and this is supposed to be noose, which is like a nut flavor. This smells like licorice, which is most schnapps. I kind of like licorice, so bottoms up. It's actually really good. It's kind of got like a sassafras kind of flavor to it. It's almost like a root beer and a licorice. It's actually really good. We had to try one more beer. This is a South Asian wheat. It's supposed to have a lot of like Asian spices like cardamom and uh, cinnamon and stuff like that. It smells really mild, I don't smell much of that, but I'm hoping some of the flavor comes out. It's a really interesting beer, it definitely has a lot of spices in it. It does, you know, still kind of taste like a wheat beer, but it covers up the weird double gummy flavor with the spices. So, best wheat beer I think I've ever had. So as you saw, we drank a lot of beer. We even had shots and we even had more shots because there were contest after contest and somehow the Americans just kept winning, which uh, was good for us in a way, but uh, we needed to soak up the alcohol a little bit. So we decided to go try another one of the bratwurst stands. So at this famous little uh, Delicatessen, we'll call it. It's a street food place, and we got some Kaiserkainen, and this is cheese stuffed into a bratwurst, and they cover it in onions and ketchup, and there's a little mustard on the side. And it's one of the best ways to wash down a little bit of beer when you've had too much beer, and we've tended to do that this trip. But my favorite way is with the curry bratwurst. Mm. I'm a sucker for this. I wish I could find it back in Florida. So if anybody in Florida wants to make a lot of money off me, come to Vero Beach and make some curry sausage because I'm into it, baby. Right next to the sausage place is Schnitzel Quella, which is a local schnitzel place. And they have schnitzel sandwiches, which is just a schnitzel on bread. I got the special, which comes with lettuce and tomato and onions and ketchup. It looks like a really good schnitzel. It looks like a really good roll. Really looking forward to it. Mm. That's really good. Our friend here said that this is one of the best places to get it around here. You can get it in one of the other districts in Vienna, but to get like traditional 
schnitzel, this is one of the best places here. So really glad we found this place. Did not disappoint. And mostly as a glutton for punishment, we stopped to get a nice donor sandwich because it's one of my favorite things that they do really cheap and inexpensive here. This place seems to do a good job. We have them go all the way with the chicken one. It's really good, really messy, and really comforting. It's gonna help me sleep like a log. And we ate a whole lot on that trip. Strategically, we are trying to have a lot of things come out right now because we're planning for our world tour. We're gonna to have a little gap. So this was like a year ago, and I think I'm still trying to lose weight from that trip. <laughs> no, but I mean, can you blame us? You guys saw the amazing food we had, and I want you guys to go down in the comments and tell us what your favorite is, maybe what made your mouth water so much, and then go out to Vienna yourself, go have some of that food, and as always, find, find yourself, yourself on the journey. journey. There's nothing better than a summertime lift up a ski mountain with a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful view, and enjoying it with good family and a goddamn beer. I'm trying to meet you soon. Alright, every day. Meet Bogey! Meet Bogey! Welton Abbey is a really cool place. It's actually this. It's Welton Burke. You said Welton Abbey. Welton Abbey. Yep, Walton, sounds better. Welton Abbey. Welton. John Boy! Welton Burke. Welton Burke. Okay. So I was considering taking Alan with us on our world trip just for security, but we're also going to bring him to the road. <laughs> Hope Dad got earbuds. Let's get moving so we can go see everything. Look at these nice hand art, hand cuffs. See how it tastes. That's the road, yeah. It's really weird. Um, Oh, I did it! Come on, big girl. Big splash. Big splashy splashy. There you go. Something inside me say I really don't think it's all